Ghost Size is one of those supplements that I file underneath. Just take it. It's been my standpoint on creatine in general for a long time, but Ghost Size brings together a couple different ingredients that are alongside creatine in that they need to be taken long term for good benefits. And they don't really need to be cycled because they're just helpful products that everyone should really be looking at. So if you wanna learn more about Size or you're just curious about the product, sit down and let's talk about Size V2. I, I like to call Size a creatine product, but it's really a lot more than that, especially in the V2. Packing in, I mean, they don't have a, like a super wide variety of products. Uh, but they have a few mainstays that really everyone really should be using in some form or another. If you're a ghost fanboy, size is the creatine product for you. It took the classic size here and added some cool stuff, changed around some things. And we're gonna talk about what that means, about what the new additions are for. And after this video, you'll leave having learned a decent amount about creatine and also what size V2 can bring to the table for you as an athlete. So obviously the first product here is creatine. I kind of call size a creatine product, but it's much more than that. But we can't get through this without talking about the five grams of Creapure. Creapure is one of the leading trademarked versions of creatine monohydrate. Now creatine monohydrate, you can buy generic. As long as it's pure, you're gonna get the same benefits from the same at all of that but creepier is a trusted source of it that ghost is going to put their money into with this previously they were using a blend of uh, hydrochloride and monohydrate but with this they went just straight monohydrate i've always maintained that monohydrate is just what i go with it, it's it's trusted it's the most cost effective i'm not really a big fan of hcl because it's more expensive and it's it's not as backed of creatine monohydrate. There's nothing wrong with it. All creatine is the same. It's gonna eventually be used as creatine. I just find creatine monohydrate to be more cost effective. I don't feel like spending extra money on something like creatine. And so I'm happy they brought it all into just monohydrate. Now creatine is one of those ingredients that has been studied for so long, it is just dumb not to take it or to argue about it. There's literally enough data on this product to form multiple meta-analysis. The first meta-analysis was formed in 2003 with over 100 studies already being performed and used in that meta-analysis. We see studies in older folk as well as younger folk. We've got 22 studies in older folk with 721 men and women. And before that, there was another study with 357 older users. Creatine does a bunch of different things. It prevents muscle wasting. It also improves bone density, especially when combined with weight training. It can help with weight gain, which is kind of helpful for some people, but it isn't uh, going to automatically create weight gain if you are in a caloric deficit and trying to lose weight. It's an, it's an important ingredient no matter what kind of caloric intake you have. There's been dozens of studies linking it with increased power output, which is important not only just for strength athletes, but physique athletes who are trying to hone their tools to create progressive overload with. Your weight training is a tool that you need to progress to cause mechanical tension and thus causing hypertrophy. There's even increases in sprints and as well as sprint recovery. So not just increasing performance, but also increasing the recovery from that enhanced performance. There's a nootropic aspect to it. In the acute, there actually is a bit of a nootropic effect, which is why you see it in some nootropics out there, but not all that often. But using it frequently is going to be helpful for that we like to see that because this is a non-stim product but you're going to be taking it daily so you're always getting a lot of benefits from that and lastly there's an increase in testosterone in some studies even it does support testosterone production in some ways but on a very base level what does creatine do for you it donates a phosphate group which is used for cellular energy production by the adp molecule and that combination is able to turn it into atp which is the universal energy source for all cells so what happens when your cells are depleted of atp the universal energy source well you're gonna have poor performance poor recovery poor cognition poor a lot of different things and so creatine is one of those ingredients that helps everything I know it's a crazy statement but it is important for everyone that's why everyone should be taking five grams of it every day and that's exactly what you get here in size v2 so another ingredient that has been tested tons and tons of different times and proven to be helpful in one capacity or another is beta alanine and so what they do here is they create a tingle reduced beta alanine blend by giving you 3200 milligrams of beta alanine and 400 milligrams of beta prime now beta prime we saw in cgv three it helps reduce the paresthesia from beta alanine if you're familiar with beta alanine you know that when you take it you get tingly eventually it can go away but new users of it or people who are particularly sensitive to it aren't really big fans of it beta alanine helps out a lot with buffering lactic acid by producing more histidine in the body now this isn't a directly a muscle builder but it's going to help with performance in the gym which then in turn gives you better tools to produce more volume and volume can be a decent indicator 
of hypertrophy, although mechanical tension is really the final decider. When you're able to get more reps and more sets in the gym, you're gonna have better tools to cause more hypertrophy with, and that's exactly what we're looking for with size. Creatine's gonna help out with that ATP production, which helps out with tons of different things, including muscle gain, recovery, better weight gain, stuff like that. Beta alanine is gonna give you better performance in the gym, which can then help you out with the same goals. Now, this isn't as widely studied as creatine, because well, creatine is the most studied ingredient outside of caffeine, but in 2012, there was a meta-analysis covering 360 participants across 15 different studies. And in 2016, there were 1,461 participants in 40 different studies using 65 different exercise regimens and 70 exercise measures. They found a significant success in exercises ranging from 30 seconds to 10 minutes, which is one thing that I always wanna bring up because a lot of people falsely think that beta alanine only helps if you're training for a minute or longer set, mostly looking at endurance athletes, but there are benefits for people just training in the gym, weight training. Now it is important to note that in 2019, there was a study on safety with beta alanine, that tingling that goes on, it's not dangerous. Beta prime isn't doing anything to help save you, but it is just making you a little bit more comfortable. In general, size is not a pre-workout, although it does have some flavors that would mix well with their pre-workouts. Some people will use it in the morning or post-workout, stuff like that. And so this beta alanine without the beta prime might be a little bit annoying. 3,200 milligrams with beta prime really won't feel like that much tingling at all. You probably won't even notice it. And how does beta prime work? Well, it uses this jubu B seed extract as well as theanine and Celastris. Now, jujube is a, a fruit and the extract is help, helpful for soothing the skin. It's not exactly negating the paresthesia, but it's kind of soothing what you're feeling. Now, theanine is a calming amino acid that you see pretty often in either sleep aids or nootropics alongside caffeine. That's gonna help just kind of calm you down. And the Celastris does both. It's calming, but it's also skin soothing at the same time. So it's a blend of different ingredients that do two different things or both and it helps calm down your skin and calm down yourself so that you won't be feeling the tingles from the paresthesia of beta alanine. Now, if you stack this with Legend, you get 6.4 grams of beta alanine, and that honestly won't be as comfortable. That's gonna be a little bit above what those 400 milligrams of beta prime can do. But if you're taking all that pre-gym, honestly, you're probably ready for the tingles. It won't bother you as much because you'd be distracted by the training. At least that's how I always feel about it. Now, after that, we have trimethylglycine, also known as betaine, at 2,500 milligrams. This is a powerhouse of an ingredient, and it's the third one here that I really feel like everyone should always be taking. Betaine kind of functions similar to creatine, but it has some extra benefits as well. At 2.5 grams, we have the clinically studied dose here, and it's gonna help a lot of different things from osmolytics all the way down to power output. As an osmolytic, it's gonna help regulate water levels between cells, and it's gonna help make sure that you're hydrated for your workout, which is awesome. Everyone knows the muscle cell is mostly water, so it needs to be hydrated to function correctly and contract well. But one thing that most of you will actually miss here is that betaine is also an ingredient that can increase nitric oxide levels as well, leading to a pump. Now what's really important here as a size product is there is one study that actually shows direct size gains from using betaine. A six week study tested 23 trained athletes and all of them have been training for at least eight years of actual trained experience, which is kind of important because a lot of times with these studies you see uh, participants that really aren't relevant to the actual buyer of the ingredients. After a training program, they had gained 5.3 pounds of lean muscle mass and lost 6.4 grams of fat mass, yielding a 3% reduction in body fat and its significant increases in arm size. And that sounds kind of crazy, and the researching team thought that as well. They dug into betaine and found several hormone pathways that were stimulated by betaine, although I will admit the numbers are pretty fantastical, and I'm sure they were really pushing these people and really driving a lot of food. When you have studies like this, they keep in a very controlled environment and most users of these products aren't gonna be eating or training at the same level as what these pro people probably were. Same team came back in 2018 and studied in females and found fat loss benefits for females with betaine. Now that isn't enough. There's a myriad of different studies from 2003 all the way up to 2014 showing athletic performance benefits across the board. We've got things like lower homocysteine levels, better VO2 consumption in plasma lactate and sprinters, improve squat repetitions to failure and overall training volume, which like I said, will lead to more uh, hypertrophy and gains. Increases in force production during isometric back squats and bench press exercises. Increased VO2 consumption, leading to a moderate increase in bench press repetitions and volume load, as well as increased peak power in cyclists. So as you can see, there's a ton of different benefits to it. Really no drawbacks. 
2.5 grams is easy to take in every day and it's relatively tasteless. It's a product that I think that everyone should be using. Now, following that, we have an ingredient that we don't talk about very often. It's mostly found in muscle builders. If there was one ingredient here that I would say isn't important for you to be taking for the rest of your life and maybe might be cycled more often, it'd probably be epicatechin. I don't have anything against it, but I don't consider it to be one of my mainstay ingredients like creatine, beta alanine, and later on synactive will be. That being said, it's still an incredible product. And for the price that you pay for size, you get a lot of epicatechin as opposed to what you would normally get for epicatechin. Epicatechin is in, uh, designed to do a few different things. Enhance strength and muscle growth, improve glucose tolerance, increase endurance, blunt fatigue, and elevate nitric oxide production. Now I know that sounds great, but it can work through in inhibiting myostatin, which is kind of a controversial thing that we hear a lot about, but it's a great thing to be doing if it is possible to do significantly. One of the only drawbacks with epicatechin, like I said before, is price. And early on when we actually did the size V1 review, we got a quote from Dan showing that most brands sell epicatechin standalone for 60 plus dollars, which shows how crazy he is for selling size V2 for $39.99. Now, I don't know what this is gonna sell for tomorrow, but I would guess that it's in the same ballpark since the V2 uh, prices haven't changed all that much from V1. Now, last of the big ingredients here, we get into Synactive at 50 milligrams. Synactive, I have a huge, huge deep dive into how it works, so I'm not gonna go crazy here. If you wanna watch that, I'll link it for you to go watch. That one has a full deep dive, and we've been huge fans of Synactive for quite some time now. It used to be called Actogen, which was a little bit confusing with Astrogen, which they actually have further down as well. Synactive helps deal with senescent cells as well as inflammation. It lowers tons of inflammation markers, while also helping the body kill off old cells and create new cells. Does that sound familiar? It's kind of really similar to what we're trying to do with training. We're trying to break down muscle cells, get rid of the old cells, and create new ones to stimulate new muscle growth. For more information on that, I would really send you over to the video. I don't wanna do a whole nother deep dive here when we've already done a deep dive there and just drag this video out for longer. Lastly, we have astrogen, an ingredient that helps out with tons of different be benefits of absorption and digestion from the same makers of Synactive, New Live Sciences. We make a lot of really cool content for them and we've seen estrogen across the board a lot of different products. Estrogen helps with the absorption of tons of different kinds of ingredients, mostly amino acids, cholines, a lot of different stuff like that. And you'll definitely see it increase in absorption here with creatine, beta alanine, and betaine. One of the things that I always bring up, however, is that as a base, estrogen helps with the intestinal wall inflammation by lowering it up to 73%. I don't know about you guys, but I know that all across America, we're having problems with gut biome, with gut inflammation, with actual digestion, and lowering intestinal wall inflammation for me seems like a win for everyone. You'll be absorbing food better, supplements better, and performing better because we know that the gut is linked so much to the brain and performance benefits seem to come like crazy once you improve your digestion. And that's size V2. A quick run through on all the things that you should be looking for in size V2. They increased this formula. I think they really improved what it is and brought it for an incredibly affordable price. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I do have to say I got this product for free. We do have a business affiliate relationship with Ghost. If you want to purchase this, it'll be available today, if you're watching this right now, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or going forward, price well as a coupon code saves you 15 to 20% off at checkout. So if you wanna check that out, use our coupon code and help support the channel. If you have any questions, like I said, comment below. I do check the comments and I'd love to talk about ghost, size, any of the V2s or anything coming. As always guys, I really appreciate you making this far in the video and have a great day. Welcome to Price Plow.